Oh, welcome back to another desk job. This one's sort of a crossover into the jewellery side of stuff. These are buckles. This one is a Buckles of America BA439. One of my favourites. In fact, this one I bought uh, close to 20 years ago now. Um, on the, uh, the day I went to enlist into the military, at least... Uh, it was a couple of days. I had to stay overnight in some uh, government paid accommodation. And I wore this so long that this uh, this bit here chewed out. And you can see it did a little bit more even after I'd repaired this. And uh, it's still quite loose even today. I pretty much stopped wearing this one because I wore it so much it almost wore through. Because uh, they're made out of pewter. And it wore all the texture off the wolf here. This has a bit of a significant meaning to me. This is one I found a few years ago, another one. These are hard, getting hard to find. Uh, but recently I went to put it on and I found that this had come off. And uh, I can see here the same situations happening here. Now part of this could be because I'm fat. Uh, so that will not help. But uh, I'm going to have a crack at repairing this. Now these are pewter, so the melting temperature is uh, of concern, which is why when I initially did this, my confidence, even though I'd been soldering for many years at that point, my confidence to solder this up was not high. And uh, I put some uh, epoxy putty in here and I drilled a hole all the way through and gave it a bit more purchase. Because traditionally, um, these little clasps only go a couple of millimeters in here. But uh, today I thought about uh, soldering this. I have a couple of different solders at my disposal, including the silver solder. But the problem I've got with silver solder is the melting temperature is um, higher than this. So it, I'm going to end up really messing things up. This is fairly close to pewter's melting point as well. But uh, I reckon with a local iron and uh, leaving this piece in here, I'll probably get away with it. Now, first of all, I'm going to fire up the soldering station. I would use my good old uh, weller here, but it's got some problems with the magnetic tip that I need to figure out. Going to warm this guy up to about 400 degrees and we've got a good temperature control on that. We're going to uh, angle down here again. We're going to get some electronic cleaning solvent into this bit here and just we're going to try and basically get some impurities out of that and uh, clean it up as best we can. And this is usually pretty good with the resin, it doesn't mess things up. All right, iron's just hit 400 degrees. So, let's see how we go. We're going to tin this just a little bit first. Clean the tip a little bit. Now, we want to really get a pool of this in here. I'm just going to test on that really thin bit, and yes, melting temperature is very close to pewter. But we're using localized heat here in the hope that we won't melt too much. All right, let this cool for a bit. I do want to wriggle this before it gets too hot, just to keep that clear. That actually seems to have worked pretty well. It's not wobbling around too much. I want to check to see if this side has chewed out any. And uh, we might even give that just a bit of a uh, preemptive repair there. Alright, first thing we're going to do is a bit of contact cleaner here. Just to prep the surface. Let's see, spudger to try and clean some of the debris off. This is just ground down pewter that's ground away over time and uh, we'll try and build this surface up a little bit here what we're just looking to do is sort of build a bit of a bund around this just to give it a bit more of a uh, bearing surface I do have some 98% tin bearing metal out in the workshop and we don't want this to bond to the stainless bit there, but I think we're going to need way more heat than this to bond it to that. This might not be the prettiest repair, and it is soaking the heat out of this very rapidly, which is both good and bad. So that gives us, um, yeah, that side of the buckle is now quite warm. I don't want to get much hotter or it's going to start discolouring the, uh, the resin in here. You can already see it's a little bit lighter than it should be down there. So uh, we don't really want to put more, much more heat into that. But that's given it just a little bit more purchase in there. 
and um, this has built up that hole a little bit. I'd call that a successful repair. So uh, let's try buckle number two. This one was done many years ago. Um, so this repair, I think, was done about 10 years ago. In fact, almost exactly, because uh, I was going to wear this buckle to go over to the United States to propose to my financial manager, and uh, I ended up making a whole separate belt buckle to take with me uh, in case they took this one off me. Let's see if I've got that. Okay, in fact, I do have the buckle in question. This is uh, almost a kilogram of bearing metal, and it's about six millimeters thick because that was the depth of the mold that I had at the time. And I made a few changes to this. Um, so, this was the 26th of the 8th, 2012 that I made this. This has been a little bit bent, and you can see it had a lot of wear and tear on this. But I wore this daily um, over to the USA, and then pretty much for the next probably seven or eight years afterwards. And then uh, I decided to make a commemorative buckle um, on my return, which I wear on special occasions. This one is uh, also equally as thick, but much more robust. Um, weighs about the same, and I have a Texas quarter in here, which is when we first met in person was in Texas. Um, she's actually from uh, Michigan, but uh, been in various places. So that was the only Texas quarter I found in the whole trip, so I set that into the buckle. 72 hours later. Okay, well it's a couple of days later and some lessons have been learnt. Primarily, um, I did not in any way get this hot enough to bond the solder properly because the plug of solder just popped straight out. And this little build up here, we can see that it wasn't really bonded all that well. Maybe we can zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, there wasn't really all that much by the way of bonding happening in there. And uh, this one, maybe I can get a bit of a better look at this through the viewfinder. But uh, yeah, I need to try a bit harder with that. Alright, I have a couple of torches at disposal. I've got the stoner torch and I've got the big bertha. Um, this will undoubtedly cause damage. This one might be just enough flame to do what we want to do. I'm going to use our piece of blue tack here and uh, we're going to try again. But uh, I'm thinking I might almost try this off camera. Largely because I don't want the distraction of messing it up. But uh, here we go. See if we can wick some solder into here and actually get it to bond. I'm going to leave that ball there. Hopefully we'll notice when it sucks in when it starts to bond with the pewter, which it is not very well. Now these torches, the problem with these is once they get too hot, the tube gets a bit constricted inside and they don't, um, they stop letting gas through. I'm going to let that sit for a bit and hopefully this is a little stronger this time. Alright, this is cooled off again and I was able to break this free. It feels actually a lot more solid this time to be honest, so uh, let's see if this repair holds. Might put a bit of that uh, contact cleaner on there just to uh, deal with the flux, but uh, so here we go, that freed it up a little bit. Alright, hopefully that works. We'll try again.